Are you ready to go wild? I'm Kelsey and I'm here at the beautiful Hope Zoo in Kingston, which is home to several species of animals, some of them exotic and some of them native to Jamaica. Over the next few weeks, we'll be taking you on a wild adventure to discover the animals right here at the zoo. Let's go wild. <laughs> Joey Brown, who is going to be talking to me about the red kangaroo, which is the largest of the kangaroo family and comes from Australia. All right, what category of the animal kingdom do they fall under? So, kangaroos are macropods um, or marsupials. So, they're the largest marsupials around, which means the young live in the pouch. Um, so, here we have two females. We have our fem older female, Zara, who's about four years old, and a younger female, Rue, who's about two years old. All right, what's their lifespan like? Uh, so typically, it's about 22, 25 years in the wild in captivity. They can live a bit longer, so they can easily live about 30 years in captivity. I know people typically think that kangaroos are aggressive, so are they aggressive or are they friendly? Um, they're actually fairly friendly. You know, the, the males can definitely get a bit territorial or aggressive during breeding season, but that's normally just with other males, you know, so that's when they're trying to compete and breed with a certain, certain females, and so you will see male kangaroos fighting with each other. Um, but with people, they're, they're very skittish, you know, they want nothing to do with people, so they're just hop away. Okay. I mean, they, want to, they don't want anything to do with people. Ours here are, are very friendly, um, but they're just kind of shy, so they kind of just stick to themselves. So if I see a kangaroo typically in the wild, is yes. it wise for me to approach? Um, I mean, you could just keep your distance, but they're not going to usually come after you, mm -hmm. um, unless, you know, I'd be more protective if they had a, a baby Joey with them. Yeah. The female might be a bit more protective, but typically they're just going to run away. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's nothing to worry about. How much does it cost them in team? It's hard to say exactly, but definitely several thousand dollars U.S. a Monthly. month. Because um, they have a specific diet kind of food that they must eat. So they, they graze on grass, but we have a special pellet formula that we import from the U.S. Um, so we have to import that food monthly, and that's you know a quite expensive expenditure. What is something interesting about a kangaroo? Let's see. I think one of the most interesting things about kangaroos is like the reproductive cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and so a couple things. So the females can literally be kind of caring for or producing almost three generations at once. Um, so the, when they give when the baby kangaroo is born, it comes out about the size of a tiny lima bean. It weighs less than one gram. This is born after 33 days of gestation. Um, and so it's born out um, and then it climbs up the mom's fur and into the pouch. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it can't survive on its own. So it gets into the pouch and immediately it attaches to the teeth to start, you know, breastfeeding. Um, and then over the next, you know, six, seven months, it, it actually develops into a fully developed embryo baby kangaroo yeah. or a joey. Um, but it stays in the pouch for the first eight months of its life, kind of growing and um, at the same time, the mom is caring for an older joey that is living outside the pouch that was probably somewhere around a year old yeah. that is still breastfeeding from the mom too so the mom is is kind of nursing an older baby that is about a year old and also nursing for a younger baby it's a different generation inside the pouch yeah. um, and and so and then at about eight months that baby will come out of the pouch and start living outside the pouch but still nursing from mom um, and then the other cool thing is they can have a fertilized embryo in the body so almost you know a baby that's is ready to start developing, but they can do this really neat um, adaptation called uh, embryonic diapause. How long can they pause it? I'm not sure if there's, they know the exact amount of time, yeah. but it can easily be several months. So, you know, they may wait, if they get pregnant in, like in a dry season, it's not the most favorable conditions, they'll pause that pregnancy. And then, you know, when the more rains come around, there's more food, then they can, the pregnancy will continue and that baby will start to develop. So it's a really neat adaptation because, they, you know, they're from Australia, which is a really harsh environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very dry, desert-like environment. So it's another neat adaptation for them to survive and thrive. What are the shipping protocols in terms of getting exotic animals to the zoo? So the shipping protocols uh, for animals into Jamaica is ex extremely strict. Um, and for good reasons, um, you know, we need to be very careful of what kind of animals are allowed to be brought onto the island um, before any animal even 
starts the kind of import process or starts you know flying here it has to pass numerous almost like let's say six months to a year of various testing blood tests vaccinations medications mm -hmm. uh, to make sure they're totally you know kind of clean and healthy and ready to come to Jamaica and all this has to go through special permitting um, through the government agencies here in Jamaica and so it's a very kind of tightly structured uh, protocol um, just to make sure you know unhealthy sick animals aren't brought in um, and kind of it's for the protection of our own wildlife here in Jamaica as well. Well, that's it for this week's Wild Adventure. Join us again next week to learn about the animals here at the zoo. Until then, I'm Kelsey.